Okay, let's do this. Let us do this. Let us get in frame. While we are waiting for the stream to start up proper. So, this is a HP ML310 G5, dating to about 2007-ish, a 65 nanometer Core 2 Duo server. This lens is an abomination, but uh, not as much abomination as that. Because what you're looking at there is a notorious Chemicon KZG series capacitor. So these were uh, notorious for having a manufacturing flaw for a while, uh, roughly around when this uh, was made, and uh, it caused them to fail prematurely. And you can see the writing on it there, Chemicon KZG. And uh, yeah, I might need this server soon for a thing with a very low budget. And uh, I have nothing better to do, so we're going to be dealing with this problem. So let's uh, get a proper camera going. Uh, this is how you do HDMI switching. Let's see if it's going to work. Do admire the Macronomicon. Hehe. <laughs> this is a projector uh, lens uh, that I've taped to the rubber mount on a 50mm F2 from uh, like 1960. It is amazing. Amazing and crazy. <laughs> Let's put that away. That's not why we're here. Uh, right. People are showing up in chat. That's good. So this is probably going to be a very quick repair once we get going. So I thought we'd just uh, shoot the entire server disassembly process because Basically, all we're going to be doing is taking the motherboard out, replacing one capacitor, and putting it back together. Because I don't think there are more than one bad cap. There is more than one bad cap in this. It's in the labelled bad cap. And you are definitely obscured by window cleaner. There we go. So, yeah, everything else in this thing, I think, checks out. This machine actually does boot. It has some ancient Xeon E3 something something. 65 nanometer core to do. It does give a picture. Uh, I don't know if it boots into an OS. I'd, I'd wager it's going to have some problems due to the bad cap right by the north bridge there. But I think once we get that done, this thing is going to work a charm. And perhaps serve someone for another few years. Normally I wouldn't actually put any amount of effort into a year. Server this old. We don't need a microscope for this. That's better. I wouldn't put any amount of effort into a server this old. Uh, but uh, the uh, there's a machine that I'm going to be working on that's currently a 2008 HP workstation with uh, real consumer grade hardware in it that's been sitting uh, on acting as a file server uh, since it was new uh, so I well this thing is a bit older than the machine is going to be replacing this actually has ECC DDR2 on it and uh, it's actually server grade hardware uh, so I think it's going to be better. Also, this has been out of commission for a few years, whereas the 2008 machine it's going to be replacing has been running, well, it's still running. That machine is serving clients right now. 
someone's asking yellow square what's that supposed to show it says front so it's just telling you put the heat sink on that way i think that's because there's a shroud going over this that it wouldn't fit otherwise the shroud is really cute for this by the way let me show you there's a fan shroud and it's got holes for the heat pipes isn't that amazing can tell the vintage of this machine from the IDE CD drive. So if you're just joining us and you missed the intro, uh, we are working on this uh, HP ML310 server, which has a singular bad capacitor right there. And uh, we're going to be replacing that because this old thing might actually have a job in the future. Oh, someone was referring to the yellow square that was underneath uh, there. Uh, that was the microscope camera, which uh, doesn't have the lights on. So it's not going to be doing much good for anyone. That's why I turned it off. Are the soldering irons on? Yes, they are. Good. Oh, yeah. Let's just pre-install the right tips for replacing a capacitor on a motherboard Ugh. before we get too deep into this I want this to be a quick quick procedure because I want to go to bed there we go he says he wants to go to bed drinking coffee uh, I think this thing should be reasonably free now I know heat sinks actually bolted to the case so I need to get rid of that. We need to put new thermal paste on that anyway. So it has to come off. And again, if you're just joining us, this is a HP ML310 G5 server dating from 2007. And it's got one of the infamous uh, Chemicon KZG capacitors uh, by the North Bridge, and it has failed. Very nice heating on this, by the way. This is very nice. And we're going to be taking that out, repealing and replacing it. So, this is going to come out now. Oh, this board's been in here for over a decade. What's holding it in? I think it's just kind of stuck on the I.O. plate. God. Yeah, it is stuck on the IO plate. Uh, I think brute force is going to solve that. Or maybe not. Uh, well, that's an issue. <laughs> that's a slight issue. Ah, oh, there we go. Brute force did solve it. So here comes the motherboard. Someone asks if this is a 771 platform. No, it's a 775. It's the first gen Xeons which predates socket 771. And we can have a closer look at everything on here. If we go there and press that magical button and in we go. Let's see if we can get this thing to focus. It should focus. Okay. That's the CPU. Maybe you can see it. Xeon 3050. Hey, Xeon 3050. 2.13 gigahertz, 2 megs LT. 65 nanometers, 1066 FSB. And if we move, let's see that's the North Bridge. Right over there. Hello KZG, you have seen better days, you have seen many, many better days. 
These capacitors are notorious for equipment, usually predating this thing, but I guess they had the bombs done still in 2007. This was the so-called capacitor plague in actual pro gear. 6.3 volts, 820 microfarads, so we're gonna do like a 1000 mic or something. Doesn't quite matter. Does not quite matter. So we can get rid of this server case now because, uh, yeah, we need, we don't need that. There are no bad caps on the back plane, so no one cares. I'm sure the rest of it is fine. Ugh. I think might actually have some drives in it. Oh, it's heavy. Right, let's get down to the nitty gritty. I'm gonna just fetch a capacitor of some description. Let's see, do I have a 20s? I have second hand 820 microfarads. 6.3 volts. Blame, perfect. Second hand 820 mic Panasonic. I'm just gonna check that with the ESR meter to make sure it's still good. And you guys are not gonna see this because I don't have any kind of screen capture set up for the big PC, sorry. But you're gonna have to take my word for it. I don't usually save bad cap when I went through this uh, storage not too long ago, so it should be fine. Zero of leads. Yes, yeah, so slash C, what are you? Forty milliohms. That's a bit high. Maybe maybe we'll just go with a new one face and mic instead. That'll make me sleep better at night. It's my problem if this thing fails anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. I think that's what we're gonna do. So here's a uh, one phase and micro. A to focus. 16 volts. Uh, Panasonic FR. So let's just check the ESR on that. If it's better, we'll use it. So the last cap was 40 milliohms. This one's probably better. Yeah, 27. 27 milliohms, so this is going to be fine. I think we have a clearance. And after main that, yeah, plenty of clearance. There's no taller than those guys anyway. Ah, this is going to be such an easy job. Someone asks, why are you sleep deprived? Because I am really bad at having jobs. The kind of jobs that uh, force you to get up in the morning. I'm much better at doing this kind of job where I can just work whenever. Someone says the CPU is a glorified Core 2 Duo E4400. Yeah, you can actually put like your first gen Core 2 Duos in these. Usually Core 2 Quads as well. Someone says, I think at this point the inefficiency of this would make upgrading pay for itself. And these are actually relatively energy efficient. This is not going to use more than uh, 50 watts sitting idle. This is just a two disc spinner like it. It doesn't have anything much fancy to do. It doesn't need any CPU power. I'm just going to uh, use it as a, you know, I'm going to deploy free NAS for the customer. Uh, just, just as a super basic file server because that's all they need. Like currently that, that machine is just in such abhorrent condition I, I I just want any other hardware and they don't want to pay for any hardware. So I'll, I'll just sign this repair off as like wasting a night and just basically give them this computer. And yeah, that, that's just gonna make my life easier administrating it instead of having to deal with like a horrifying cheap HP consumer PC. That's going to be a piece of shit and going to fail and fail and fail and fail. So I'm, I'm just 
doing this to to ease my mind and to not force the customer to buy a machine. Put some walls on the that's all this one. We need to probably deal with zooming this guy in a slight bit. I said zoom in. Damn you. Zoom in. Zoom in. Good boy. There we go. Beautiful. Uh, so this is a PC motherboard, meaning that it's basically a solid chunk of copper. So I want to turn my soldering iron up to 12 and uh, dab on a shit ton of solder. I oh, might as well. Actually, let's do this under the microscope for the sake of you guys. Oh god. My microphone is catching on my chair. Now that's bad because if my microphone catches too much on my chair, my pants fall off and you, 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 you don't want that. You seriously do not want that. Uh, let's see. Lights. Uh, where are we? There we are. That should be our capacitor. I don't really need the microscope for this, but you guys get a much better view. So for starters, I'm just going to blob a bunch of solder on this. Oh, film extractor. A bunch of solder that's just to lower the melting point since this is probably lead free. Uh, this seems to be melting very well actually. We don't need the hot air. I think we don't need the hot air for this. So I'm just gonna uh, disregard the microscope camera because I think I don't think we're gonna do the hot air which I thought we were gonna, and I was gonna show you how nice it's gonna melt, but instead I think we're just gonna keep a very wide tip across both legs, grab it from the other side, and gently, gently wiggle it. One leg is moving, both legs are moving. Both legs, all the solder has melted, and we have pulled it free. Negative side towards the IO. Now quickly, while it's still hot, I'm going to grab the, the soldering pump and uh, suck the hole free. And I was too slow. So you need to be very quick on actually doing the desoldering pump because uh, they do not have the continuous thermal performance required to actually... To actually melt solder on a heavy copper board like this. <sighs> Someone in chat says, Are you not fine with putting all your important data on a 90s desktop running mismatched IDE RAID Siri? Huh. This is almost worse. Like the server we're dealing with, uh, they don't even have the uh, credentials to log on to it. Like someone set it up for them uh, 11 years ago and they just left it. And no one's touched it. It doesn't even have a UPS. There you go, using both soldering irons to get the thermal capacity required. And now I don't remember the polarity of the cap, but we'll assume the solder mask is correct. Someone says, use hot air, don't kill PCB. Yeah, if you use it like the uh, uh, a heat while pulling capacitor method, you need to be very, very certain that you have actually melted all the solder. Uh, Basically, while you're applying heat, uh, it should feel as if the capacitor is not attached at all. You should be able to very lightly touch it and do this. If, if you need to apply any force to the cap and the solder hasn't melted all the way, 
and you're going to do that with a bit too much force and you're going to pull the wires through and uh, if those are connected to a middle layer you're fucked, your board is done there's no, no recovering from that but uh, with some skill and uh, uh, practice uh, you, you can t tell when the, cap, when the solder is actually melted someone says hope it's not MSI OEM uh, this does not, does not look MSI OEM if anything this actually looks uh, IBM like uh, this looks very IBM made in Taiwan HP ML310 G4 I think this might like I, I know this is the same OE as uh, IBM used in their service at that time because it looks identical but uh, what if it actually is not IBM OE board I don't know the same same OE though definitely uh, telltale is we'll have these little white globs of paint on all the caps uh, right you let's just get this back in place uh, we do not need extra flux for this When soldering these, you need to take quite a bit of time to allow the heat to actually travel through the board, like so, because the solder is actually very slowly getting sucked into the board as it uh, as the V is heating up. If you just solder it quickly, you're just going to solder it right on the edge of that, and all the current's going to have to flow through the V instead of having solder to go through, and uh, that's. Uh, I don't think it actually matters too much, but it's bad practice. So I think that's uh, just fine. I don't think we damaged anything. That couple of phrases came right by there, but everything's everything's fine. Someone's mentioning the CMOS battery. Yeah, let's just uh, put a new one in right away. Uh, like this service uh, retired uh, it's been scrapped because it failed uh, by by virtue of this guy I'm gonna fetch a CMOS battery I'm gonna fetch a CMOS battery and we'll we'll have it done as well if I can find one I am quite certain that I do own CMOS batteries I have no idea where I have put my CMOS batteries. Aha! A discovery has been made. CMOS battery. Let's get a multimeter as well because uh, it's actually, these are somewhat old. Uh, it's actually relatively common for uh, these uh, 2032s and uh, 2025s to just die in the box. So I usually just check the voltage on them. Good trick to test the condition of these is uh, you squeeze them. And if the voltage drops considerably, uh, they're bad. This is fine staying. It's like barely changing. Because one of these that's slightly bad is actually going to have a high enough impedance that just squeezing it between your fingers, if you're at all sweaty, is going to cause a significant amount of current, like a few hundred microamps, a few tens of microamps to run through your fingers, and that's enough to lower the cell down. Someone asks, what's the year? Uh, wide connector by the IDE. It's a SATA or SAS. It's a weird old connector that predates the one you usually see on RAID cards today. It's a four channel a SATA SAS. Someone says once you've recapped one MSI motherboard you never trust silk screen again. That is very true. 
I have been there. I have done that. I have seen the smoke. So I know your pain. But I did remember that uh, negative was going towards the IO plate and that is what we're seeing, so we're good. Someone said something about the PLC C socket, what it's for. I have no idea, it's not Isla labelled. I need to get more coffee, I'll be back in a second. Well, actually I have a wireless microphone now so I can yammer on off camera, that's amazing. The sounds of a kitchen. In the dangerous kitchen. Something, something all mouldy. That's a Frank Zappa song. For dangerous kitchen, it is amazing. Uh, right, uh, I don't think there's going to be anything more wrong with this thing. We don't have any more case of G's. We have a bunch of small SMD electrolytics. Let's just check one of them just to make sure nothing's completely horribly broken. Uh, since SMD electrolytics tend to fail, this is a 100 micro, 16 volts, and it's in parallel with like 1 billion other things, so it's measuring 2,500 micro. Let's measure this guy. Also in parallel with literally everything. So, yeah. When you have these giant banks of capacitors, they don't usually fail because the load becomes quite distributed. Uh, this is a weird cap there. Is that even a cap? Am I measuring the right thing? No, I'm not. There's a 25 volt 33 microfarad right here, and I have no idea what it does. It's weird. And it's in parallel with a million other things, so... I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's going to be... Like, I'm, this board is going to be more reliable than the consumer HP workstation we, we are replacing anyway. So, that's about it. Let's get this thing back in the case and see if it boots. That's the wrong way. Hmm. I need to clean the thermal paste off of that. Chat says something. Chat says, hey glad I caught you live. Thanks for inspiring me to pick up my own APC Smart UPS to back up most of my apartment. Large external batteries and all. Good luck on the repair. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying your UPS. I just scaled down all my UPS business by an order of magnitude to decrease my idle pay consumption. I'm mostly running like cheaper back UPS units now, old ones, just because they have such a low standby pay consumption. But old smart UPSs are good still. Hmm. Someone says, looks like they use mostly theoretically decent caps aside from those two by the memory. Which two by the memory? I'm not seeing any anything bad on this. We have Sanyo, we have uh, Chemicon and Sanyo and Chemicon. And uh, the SMD ones are unlabeled. And Chemicon and Rubicon. I, I don't I don't see anything wrong with it. With any of this, they used a KZG, which was a mistake they could not have predicted. Green ones are Sanyo. Nothing wrong with Sanyo. I have no qualms with Sanyo. Case. Mm. 
Ai! Sanya, uh, like, uh, I know there were green caps on old motherboards which used to fail all the time. I don't think it's the ones we have in here. No, I don't think it's the ones we have in here. Uh, well, let's just take the power supply parts quick, quickly and have a look. Just so that we don't deploy a bad server with my screwdriver go. Since, we, well, since it's so easy to get at anyway. Wait, what? Is it easy to get at? It's in some dumb bracket. But we'll take a quick look. These older HP slash Compaq power supplies are usually beasts. These power supplies tend to last a very, very long time. That's horrible posture right, right there. Why are you not coming out? Oh, there's some more screws. Ah, my back. My butt. Screws there, two screws there. Phillips two, surprisingly. They look like Phillips once. Oh, we can actually get a pretty decent look through the grill on that actually. It's got some lelons, but it looks fine. It's a double board thing. Ah, fuck if we're not taking that apart. Well, okay, okay, fine. Two more screws. Two more screws. It's worth it. I don't want to see anything horribly wrong with this. Also, we do not need the microscope anymore. This should, in theory, pop apart. There we go. Right, quick gander in this guy. Here. Can I? I cannot. So we have a couple of lelons on the secondary side, more chemicons, nothing swollen. Primary side looks good, nothing on fire. No ants, no wasps, no spiders. Oh, it's a tiny little lelon on the side there. This is not super high quality, but uh, since it works, I'm uh, gonna bet it's good enough. It's gonna be better than what it's replacing anyway. Oh, I'm seeing an instant replay of my own neck over there. That's 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 a horrifying sight. I'm I'm truly sorry for subjecting you to such a thing. But yeah, this guy's fine. And if it's not fine, I'll, I'll deal with it once the issues show themselves. This is how you use a power supply, like a pro.
you like you don't bother disconnecting the wires in the server before taking the power supply parts. There we go. Where is my screwdriver? Where's my screwdriver? That's the wrong screwdriver. Where's the right screwdriver? I don't know. There, there it is. The actual reason I picked this old server up in the first place was uh, it's uh, closely related to my main uh, server case, which is a, an ML150 G2, uh, which has six SATA hot swap base. And I was like, oh shit, this is just a new version of that, excellent gimme. Uh, and uh, yeah, it is a new version of that, but it's just got four hot swap base, uh, plus like a bunch of 525 inch slots, so it's completely worthless for my data storage needs. Like, I have no use for another 4-bay machine. I have an 8-bay IBM sitting in the other room, though, with a broken motherboard, which actually has, like, an identical cap like this, which has failed and won't pair on. But I don't think we're dealing with that today. This goes in out of frame with considerable amounts of violence. Hmm. Screwdriver. <sighs> Someone asks a Xeon 775. Yes, this is a Xeon 775. Someone says, am I the only one that still mourns the loss of Rubicon MBZ MZS series? What, why would you mourn the loss of that? Have they been Were they good caps which were discontinued, or were they bad caps which uh, died? Like, I know there was this, another series of Rubicons which uh, died all the time. Which look uh, similar to these guys, but uh, these guys haven't failed yet, so I'm thinking they're not going to fail. They would have failed already. Yeah, this is Trace Crew. I have no idea where that goes, so... Yeah. Guess we don't need it. In goes the board. Someone says they were top of the line caps that would basically never die. Well, yeah. these guys are Rubicon MBZ. So there you go. Praise them. We are not worthy. We are not worthy. I guess that's a good thing because when that this poor old machine is gonna run just fine. <laughs> oh wait, what? Oh, that's not very nice. The plastic piece of the foot of a case is poking through there so much that you need to like actually slide the motherboard under the foot. Oh, that's a bit dodgy. Okay. Someone's asking, FF Corsac, do you have any experience with Kemet capacitors? No other brand is, in quotes, made in EU. Uh, I use them from time to time. Usually the specs are awful, so I just tend to avoid them. But they make a lot of specialty caps, like axial ones and stuff, I think. Or, or other filmmakers. I, I, I have used Kemets at some point. 
I have no horrible experiences with them. But I have nothing really outstanding to say either. But uh, I, I know that I've bought Kemet at some point. Someone says yay for PCI X. What are you smoking? We have PCI Express today. It's so much nicer. Edward Hartman in chat says they discontinued them referring to the Rubicon uh, MBZ series and you cannot buy what replacement ones that meet the same ESR spec today that are not polymer. Is that a problem? <laughs> I mean if you, if, if, if you can get your hands on polymer caps you know get, get polymer caps they're better. God, have I made a mess of a screws? I think I've made. Oh no, I haven't. Few. We have two screws too many. I have no idea where they're supposed to go. I haven't the slightest clue. That's one. But we have that finishes off our ATX rows. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's no M ATX screw. So we have one screw too many. One screw left over. I found it. It's for the power supply. Woe is me. What would we do if the power supply was attached with five screws instead of six screws, the machine would be a fire hazard. Where's... CPU power? 20 pin ATX power. Let's just move this around a bit to make sure it uh, makes a good connection. Uh, I think I have some more RAM to shove in this thing. Let's just do that. Uh, this should be similar gen. This should be 4 gigs of ECC DDR2. Yeah, ancient stuff. PC4200. Geez, 4200. This is 512 five, meg 5300. And this is a one gig stick of 5300, but we're going to be more better, better served by more memory than faster memory. The CPU is a pile of garbage anyway. Where's my booze? Well, that's my booze. Always booze your memory slots. Every single time. Every single time. tell that my experiences w with dealing crap hardware rather than new hardware since basically everything I do is just mitigating wear to and dirt like abusing the memory slots like putting them in and taking them out and putting them in and taking them out and putting them in just to make sure there's no trash in the slot that's going to give me a headache because there's always trash in the slots <laughs> I 
shit, I need to make a new free NAS installed USB. Which is a major bother since a free NAS USB sticks cause Windows 7 computers to blue screen if you install them, so it's annoying to format. I have to use some Linux thing for that. There we go. Old crap goes in there. This heatsink is sexy. So very sexy. up. Where'd my booze go? That's my booze. Ah, don't want to get all these particles in the case. Ah. Nice and shiny. This thing looks so incredibly symmetrical. Why do you have to you put that towards the front? Like this thing is a perfect square. Mm. Uh, thermal paste. I only have fancy stuff. Master gel maker. Oh well, it's cheap. Don't need a lot since this thing makes no heat at all. Screwdriver. Please, screwdriver. Screwdriver, please. Eh. Screwdriver. PC parts over today, I should have gotten more thermal paste. Someone says MX4 Master Race. The Master Gel, uh, according to like a bunch of tests, performs slightly better than basically everything else, and it's cheap, so I got a bunch of that a while ago. I mean, this is for like pretty big syringe. I think it's like 30 grams or something, so there's a shit ton in here. It was like 10 euros. Rub it around. Uh, do we think the IDE CD-ROM is still going to work? I think nay. I think the IDE CD-ROM is not going to work, but we'll plug it in anyway. I'll just disconnect power from it. Worse, all loomed in all nice, so I didn't want to rip it out. But we don't need power going there. It can be installed from a USB anyway. Put some booze in this as well. This is our SAS SATA connector. These are terrible, really bad. They never work right, so give them lots of alcohol. Anytime something is not working right, you give it a lot of alcohol. Yeah. I'm sure that's fine. Uh, do we need to disconnect that to get the shroud on? We do not. Uh, let's just booze for Molexes as well, just, just because. 
always abuse everything. A small amount of alcohol is cheaper than a, a... A large amount of alcohol is cheaper than a small amount of headache. Roll that around. <sighs> Someone said something about politics. We're not politi political around here. Maybe it's just bad cap. No need for that anymore. Need our front panel. Gonna need our front USBs. Where the hell do these guys go? They went somewhere weird. Oh yeah, there we go. Pokey. How does this go on? How do you go on? Oh, there's a couple of studs in the bottom that it just kind of hangs on. So that's fine. Hmm. Like, did I just ruin? Ev I, I just ruined everything. Stay in place, please. This is not going well. Come on. How am I unable to insert a screw? No, because that's not on right. You stupid thing, go in there. The wiring loom is kind of squeezing against this thing, so it kind of wants to move that way. And it feels all horrible and forced, but that's just, that's just the way this thing is. There we go. Or better, coming together. Oh, that's not going anywhere. <sighs> so, just need the uh, hard drive caddy fan. Click like so. And this thing should now be ready to go. Yeah, more or less. So really, all we all have to do is, uh, oh God, if I'm to see a test monitor, I'm gonna have to use that camera. Getting that camera pointing at the test monitor is uh, an interesting time. A very very interesting time. <laughs> yes, I'll just have a HDMI cord dangling on our work area. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, this is a, this is such an amazing angle. We are professionals. <coughs> oh dear, human noises. Yeah, that's not even that bad. Uh, let's get one of the drawers that's supposed to go in this thing installed. Uh, I want to make sure that the raid controller actually sees them. 
basically forced to go through the rate controller as well because I don't think I don't think this thing actually has any SATAs. Does this thing have SATAs on an Intel controller? I don't think it does. It's got an internal USB. No, it's only got SATAs. Uh, it's only got SAS. That's annoying. That's super annoying. But this thing's just going to eat two terabyte drafts anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, my issue is uh, the old LSI controllers that are shipped in these uh, can't see drives or can't use drives bigger than uh, two terabytes. So if you try and shove something bigger in there, it's just going to cap it out at two terabytes and uh, You're screwed. You need a different control in that case. That's why in these machines, often just putting your drives on the like chips as controller is going to be a better experience since uh, you can actually use big drives on really old hardware. These candy screws are T10. Where is the most accessible T10? I think they might be here. Yes, there's a T10. That's enough of a T10. I think these are the right caddies for this case, I'm not sure. We, sh we should probably make sure these are the right caddies for the case, because I just grabbed them out of a pile of caddies. Yeah, good enough. So if you're just joining us, we are actually done with the motherboard repair already, and we're just installing drives to test this thing. So, sorry, if you want to see the motherboard repair, which was uh, replacing the entirety of one capacitor, you're going to have to wait until I publish this thing. Which takes a while, because for some reason YouTube takes forever to actually process the streams once they've gone up now. It takes like hours. One took almost a day. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe it had something to do with the Google outage. The Google Apolypse. That's one. What are you? 320 gigabyte consumer hard drive from the Stone Age. This is one. Let's see if we can do this. These caddies are really hard to install without just exploding them into a million pieces, but I think we can get this thing in there. Ah. Can we? It's not quite in there. Yes. No. Uh, don't fall apart. Fluffy Fluffy in chat says there was a Google outage. Yes, there was a Google outage. And like large parts of the world, Google basically broke for a while last week. I think it was last week. At some point in the recent past, a bunch of Google services just went, I ain't gonna do that. And uh, everything broke. Someone says, now I'm really wondering what the camera is attached to. Which camera? Which camera are you talking to? Like, this one's just on a tripod. That one's on a flex, like this guy is on a flexible army thing I got at a Chinese market in Portugal, of all places. Mm. 
in you go. Come on, final screw. Drive number one. I'm not going to bother the labeling these or anything right now. Let's just do. Oh yeah, this is an old machine with a dirty, disgusting SATA connector. So you know what the resolution to dirty, disgusting SATA connectors is? Booze, of course. Alcohol. Always alcohol. Always booze your connectors. Because else you're gonna have read errors on your drive. Today at work, a tech was working on a server and he, he couldn't get the drives working. And it was an old piece of crap as well. And I was like, did, did you clean the SATA connectors? And he was like, no. So I boozed them and then everything worked just fine. You always booze the connectors. Every single time. Have I driven that point home yet? Someone asks, are you taking another road trip this summer? Oh, no, I don't think so. I will not have the time, I'm too busy with work. Edward Hartman says, the tripod not really seemed like quite a struggle to move. That's because it's got a HDMI cord attached to it. And the HDMI cord goes over here, down to somewhere round van, 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 and I don't want to ruin everything. Like, I just know the, the HDMI cord goes here, and it ends up there. What happens in between those two points is a mystery. Alright, I have installed these. I had strong arms. This is a, an 80 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar SE. I cannot see a date code, but it's old. This is probably the original drive for this server. Which probably has the original hours of that server on it. Which is going to be like... Yeah, probably not that much actually. This thing's probably seen less than a decade of use. In you go. Ah, oh, these caddies are annoying. is coming apart. Ah, these caddies, man, these caddies with a two-piece plastic metal construction. They're decent to use but annoying to put drives in. Someone said something about deoxit. I don't know what that is, you can't buy it here. It's not something I've ever tried. I like I use AX window cleaner and pure isopropyl alcohol and that's it. Brake cleaner if it's really nasty stuff. I, I don't see a point in using the brand name. Brand name chemicals for like general solvent use. The stuff I've got works just well enough. Someone said, no SSD, criminal. Well, There's going to be an SSD in this thing, don't worry. But uh, we don't care about the SSD right now because we just want to see if the controller can see the hard drives. Like, the SSD is going to be tiny, like 128 gigs or something. Uh, so it's, that's obviously going to work just fine, no matter what. But we don't know if uh, the controller is going to see these modern big drives. Oh, yeah. Always booze the connectors. Never forget to booze the connectors. There we go. <sighs> okay. 
of a moment of truth is seen upon us. Oh god, HDMI cord stuck in microscope. Chaos ensuing. You can go away. Microscope, we want to see the monitor. Uh, right, let's just find all our things. Power, video, keyboard and mouse. Video, keyboard and mouse, and uh, power. Rum. That man says, damn it, reboots every time you connect something to it. <laughs> okay, that does not want to move. doing something. This thing takes forever to get going, so I'm not worried. Could be, but it's not dis discovering the RAM, but if that's too slow or something. Go focus, please. Is it not going to go? Come on. Focus, please. Okay, I'm starting to date. This is a happy server. Oh no. Oh no. What's that? Green LED. We got picture. What's problem? Hey, there we go. HP. It's alive. Let's see if it'll... Uh, stupid thing. Stop auto-focusing yourself to death. Can I just lock the focus on this guy? Let's see. Focus. Manual. Manual. No more painful auto-focus. Let's just bring it right out of focus. There we go. It said stuff. Default settings, yeah, yeah. Let's just check through the setup. I, I don't think this thing is going to enumerate the drives in the BIOS. BIOS dating, 2007. We don't have a CD-ROM. How does this work? Can I like do that? Okay. Uh, we want that to be number one. Hard drive number two. Yeah. No, we don't want to exit. I'm not sure what you really do about this thing, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. What does that say? Embedded say to raid. Enabled. Oh wait. Maybe we don't want that disabled. Maybe that's JBOD mode and ena and enabled is like internal uh, like raid. Uh, old style raid we don't want that since we since we're going to be running freenas on this machine uh, I just want to see I just want to see why is the SATA control this doesn't have a SATA control or maybe, maybe, maybe the drives go, maybe like, uh, say to, uh, connect the thing is configurable so we can get some of the Intel control, that would make my day a lot nicer. 
I don't know though. All I want is for this thing to enumerate two two terabyte drives and if it does that I'm happy. Then we shut down shop for today. If it doesn't uh, uh, Come on. Give me some drives. It is, I think it is discovering all the RAM though. That's a good thing. It is discovering the drives. It is not telling us the sizes of the drives. Let's just see what it does if it'll continue on to some. Nope. Well, it doesn't have an OS. It enumerates the drives. I think it's going to be fine. I'll have to install an OS on this thing to actually uh, get any useful info on it. But uh, the important thing is it runs. The bad cap has been rectified. And I think this is going to be a happy little server. That's going to spend probably a lot more years serving a happy customer. Out of MF mode, please, else I forget this forever. So I think we're pretty much done with that. And I think this stream is pretty much over. Let's just see. Let's just see what the chat's got to say before we sign off. Someone asks, are the rails on your microscope still okay? Uh, the bearings are garbage, uh, but the rails are... Yeah. They're a bit scored, but they're better than they used to be, like the old style rails, so they're hardened. Someone says, sounds like Morton's house now. My place house, yes indeed. Someone says, no ZFS dedupe with 4 gigs of RAM though. We do not need that. Like, this thing is replacing a machine which has a single, a single one 250 gigabyte 5400 RPM drive. Single 5400 RPM 250 gig drive, which is combined with system and shares, which has been running for over 10 years. Like two mirrored, two terabyte modern low speed drives. It's, that's, it's better, it's, it's just better. This is just better, and it doesn't. He like two terabytes is fine. This is going to contain backups from three small PCs and uh, some database stuff. It's just super low, low power stuff. So fluffy fleever says that's one heck of a server. This is not one heck of a server, but it's it is one heck of a cheap server since this is not going to cost. A customer, basically anything. Hmm. Someone asks, where in the house are you? I am upstairs in the new workshop. I am going to edit the uh, renovation videos and uh, moving in videos at some point. I'll probably do a bit of a tour, but I've been incredibly busy just setting everything up lately. Like, very, very busy. It's surprised, like, it's difficult to believe how much time it takes to move your workshop. Someone says I missed something about a play on words. Uh, I am tired. I don't care. So, let's end this before I make a fool out of myself. Make sure you enjoy yourselves. Goodbye.